Hello there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. Today we have a special treat for you. This is the fourth part of our series on learning to fight with the side sword. But of course, you can apply these lessons for arming sword or any other single-handed sword as well. Heck, you can even find these actions in Sword and Buckler and Sword and Rotella. So feel free to use it as you want. This will be a complete lesson, but I'll try to keep this video fairly concise. So I show you all the actions, I show you how to apply them, give you general hints and advice, and then I'll also upload a full lesson plan as a PDF, which you will find in the video description. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. It's from Giovanni da Logocchia, of course, that's our source. And it's from his section on the single sword. And there he presents to us uh, several defenses and counters from the guards. And the guard I want to look with you today is Codalonga. So Codalonga is a guard that covers your right side, your dominant side, and it can be formed with the right leg in front or with the left leg in front. With the left leg it's Cola Longa Alta, with the right leg it's Cola Longa Estreta. The important bit is that your right shoulder and your right hip are fairly retracted. And to do this you might need to turn your right foot in Cola Longa Estreta outwards. Of course, there are other uh, positions that also are called coda longa, which are coda longa larga, which can be formed with either foot forward. And the defining feature here is that the point is offline. And coda longa e destesa, either foot forward, which uh, defining feature is the sword pointing to your rear. Okay, start with one position and uh, choose between, let's say, Cola Longa Stretta and Cola Longa Alta, so with the point in front. But of course, these could be applied to Lager and Pistesa as well. Just uh, remember that from these positions, your sword will need a longer time to travel forward to defend yourself. Okay, what are the requirements of this course? You can be, of course, a beginner, uh, for the technical play, you don't need a lot of gear at all. I would advise you to always wear a mask and some gloves to protect your hands. But if you want to apply these drills in sparring, you will of course need the full gear. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so let's start with Cola Longa Stretta or Alta. The first thing we want to defend is a typical attack that is a mandrito to our head. More specifically, a mandrito fendente, a downwards blow. And our defense against this blow will be the rising of our sword in guardia di testa. Okay, guardia di testa, that is with the uh, sword hand stretched right towards your opponent the sword pointing to your left and a bit downwards. So if this blow comes in, you just need to raise your arm and form a blockade against the incoming blow. And from here you can of course strike your own mandrito or you could maybe even thrust an imbrocata, that is an overhand thrust, depending on the pressure. Okay. At first, I would advise you always to just uh, practice the action of the hand. So start already in range. Your partner gives you the mandrito fendente. You raise your sword and then you can strike to your opponent with the repost. You can also already practice like little variations in the cut. So sometimes Stefan can strike more to my left than I will naturally feel a bit weaker in that parry, which is beneficial to throw this mandrito or drito tramazzone, which is just a mandrito as a wheeling cut. 
But if he strikes more to the center of my head or maybe to my right side, then I might feel quite a bit stronger because this blow will naturally land into my strong, my forte. And from here, I can thrust my imbocata and follow up maybe if I get the pressure with another mandrito. Okay, general advice. Um, you also uh, always should wear protection, of course, but if you strike the repost, you don't need to hit your partner hard at all. So if Stefan strikes me here, this can be, of course, now adapted to the level of gear I'm wearing, and you should up the intensity on this part of the drill. But if I'm now striking the repost, and we have this choreographed drill, then striking hard gives you nothing, basically. Stefan learns basically nothing at all. He has to get struck. He may, might also get a headache that leads to concussions. You want to avoid that at all costs. And it's also a part of a drill which is generally not fun, of course, because you get struck and you aren't allowed to defend. So getting struck, if you are allowed to defend, is generally fine. But if you aren't allowed to defend because it's a choreography, then I would super advise you just be gentle with your partner. Okay, if you got this, then you also want to employ the footwork. So it's a little excursion. If Stefan now needs to make a step to get this Mandrito Fendente to my head, I of course have a bit more time and I can react with my own footwork. Let's start with Cola Longa Stretta and the footwork advice Giovanni Della Gocchi gives us. If we parry in two actions, two tempi, so a parry and a repose, then generally the left leg will accompany the parry it will go forward, closer to our right. So it will be a gathering step. And then with the repost, it will be accompanied by our right foot. Because of course our partner can also just get a step back. So Stefan is now allowed to step in and then step one step back. So one, two. And with this advance of the right foot, you still have the distance. So this strikes into the same vibe as Manchulino, who says uh, a good parry will always be done with stepping forward, not stepping back. Giovanni Dalla Gocchio implicitly says the same in this section as well, but of course later he says, well, the stepping back has not to be doubted because sometimes you just have to step back to change guard to be safe. Okay, so we now want to practice this part of footwork in a static way. So we always start from a static position. Stefan comes in, I practice my footwork, and then I go in with the repost. I also want to employ another advice of Giovanni Della Gocchi, and that is the turning of my body. I always want to turn my body behind my sword. So how do I do this? If the strikes comes in, I not only get my left leg closer to the right, but I also step a bit behind it. Now I have performed two parries, as Giovanni Dallagocchi says. One with the sword and one with the body. And from here you can, of course, then again do your repost. And you can vary it, so Stefan is also still allowed to strike more into the center of my head, that I'm just going in here with the imbrocata. So you can train two things already, react to pressure and work on your footwork. How is it with the left leg in front? Well, there, Giovanni Della Gocchia says, the right foot almost always, almost, accompanies the parry and the attack. So from here, if Stefan strikes towards me, I would already step into this blow, strike, and from here just follow with the left leg. So he says, the right leg accompanies the parry and repose, and after this, the left leg will follow. Okay, and if you have practiced this enough in the static fashion and you're quite familiar with, the act, with this action, then you should, of course, practice footwork in a dynamic fashion. So we are allowed to 
move around each other and Stefan can choose a moment to do his attack where I have to defend and perform the footwork we just discussed. And still, you don't need to strike hard to the head at all. Okay, so this is the first action we wanted to learn. You can now also switch the degree, so the angle of the incoming mandrito a bit. You could go for a mandrito squalimbrato, so a diagonal cut from the right, or you could also go for a mandrito tondo. And what Dalagokia says is, all you have to do from Guardia di Testa is to lower your point just even a bit more. Okay, so from here we can already, because we are quite familiar with these actions, can also do this in a smooth fashion. I just have to lower the point a bit. And of course, as the receiving part, Stefan is here the coach, he teaches me this action, the squadra di, uh, di testa parry and the repose. You also want to gear up, not like me, who speaks to you, but you want to gear up so your partner doesn't have to hold back so much. Okay. This was the first action. All right, so we learned our first action. Now we come to the second one. Since we are just now defended against a mandrito to our head, we now want to learn to defend against a reverso to our head. And what do we do here? The first part of the motion that's quite important is still the same. Okay, so if our opponent strikes a reverso, we still lift our hands. But in this case, we point our sword towards the opponent and thrust him in guardia d'entrare. Okay, so still without footwork, you can just practice the handwork. You lift your sword and if you are noticing that the strike comes to your right, so it's a reverso, then you just push the point towards your right. So you want to aim into the blow of the opponent. So I aim towards the right side um, of Stefan, so for Stefan it's his left side, okay? So the strike comes from my right and I point towards the right. Once again, it's up and I thrust towards the chest or the neck, uh, just thrust where it's most comfortable for your partner. Okay, if you have done this statically, now we want to again incorporate footwork. You gain some time with it. Um, what do you do from here? If you're uh, parrying in a single tempo, and this is a single tempo action, you parry and repose at the same time, then Giovanni Dallagocchia says, your right almost always accompanies the parry and repose, and the left one follows. So what do we do here? I step with my right foot towards my left and my left follows and I thrust into Guardia d'Entrare. This gives me an advantage of angle. It leaves me safe. It turns my body once again behind the sword. And if you've done this with static footwork, you can then practice again with dynamic footwork, the single action. And you can of course do this from Cura Longa e Alta. Then I would advise you to actually step with the left foot towards the left and the right one follows after it. So it's still a single tempo action. And if you've done this a couple of times, then you can go for the first variation in stimulus. So this is one thing uh, that I would advise you that you incorporate in all your lessons. You never want to teach just one action for one side, but you always want to vary the input. So actually the defender has to make an active decision on where he wants to parry and repost. So we can combine all the exercises we have just done. And Stefan is now allowed to strike a mandrito fendente 
or he is allowed to strike reverso fendente. And you can do this with static footwork at first, but here we just present us with, um, with dynamic footwork. So if he strikes a mandrito, I go into guardia di testa. <laughs> Don't talk while you're sword fighting. Or if he strikes a reverso, you parry into guardia d'entrare, and of course your point should actually aim towards the face of the opponent. Okay, and this is already quite, can already be quite challenging. So at first, you want to make the two stimuli as different as possible, so it's fairly easy for you to differentiate between them. But if time goes on and you put on more gear, you can also make these stimuli more and more look alike. So Stefan would be allowed to strike almost a fendente straight from the top. He could strike mandriti from the diagonal, from the horizontal. So you actually have to make an active decision on where it's better to parry in guardia di testa and when it's better to parry in guardia d'entrare. So one more time, we can do this fairly slow just because I'm once again fairly... Okay, so here I could have gone with... Um, I could have gone with Guardi d'Entrara. I still uh, did it with Guardi di Testa, but it's fine because Guardi di Testa can also parry with the... Uh, with repose with the Imbrocata, okay? And there you learn quite a lot, okay? And then if you've done this, you always want to uh, invert another stimuli, and that's our uh, third action for today and the last one, and that is a reaction to mandriti or reversi to our legs. So first you always want to um, train your reaction in an isolated way. So if Stefan attacks my front leg, I want to retract it, and in the same tempo, so it's again a single tempo action, I want to thrust to the face or if I'm, uh, to be more gently, maybe to the bib of his mask. Okay, and this doesn't change for Giovanni Della Gocchia if it's a reverso or mandrito. If you can withdraw the leg, you can always uh, counter in single tempo with a thrust to the chest or head. And then you again start in a static footwork fashion, then in a dynamic footwork fashion, so still the action is isolated. Okay, so you train your withdraw while you extend the thrust. So this is, this happens at the same time. Or if you're in Cura Longa Alta, this happens in the same time. And then you can return to your original guard, or from here you can also retreat into your original guard. That doesn't matter at all. And if you've done this, again, you want to mix up your stimuli. So in the next exercise, Stefan is allowed to attack high or low, and you have to react appropriately. Still remember your footwork, remember when, where to react with the Guardia di Testa if you're in your strong with the Imbrocata or in your weak with the Mandrito or Dritto Tramazzone. Okay, and this is already quite a lot. You have now actions against Mandriti and Riversi to your upper openings and to your lower openings, so it's already quite complete. So uh, you can now drill this with more gear and in a more competitive setting. So you're maybe first only one partner is allowed to strike these four blows, mandrito, reverso, up and down, and he is allowed actually to score. So. Stefan actually wants to score. For this, I, of course, had to put more gear on. And I'm only allowed to score with the correct actions. So I only score if I correctly parry in Guardi di Testa with the Mandrito or with, um, with a leg void and a simultaneously thrust to the face or the bib. Doesn't matter. And then you can take it one step further. There you are both allowed to do the same actions. It's not a coach and a student anymore, 
but you're still rewarding these actions more than other. And then you can take this to free sparring. First, maybe at medium speed and full gear, and then you go full out. But still, the actions you want to train, you always want to reward more. So for example, you can score with any action. That's totally up to you. But you score maybe triple if you practice an action you just wanted to train in this session. Okay, I hope this lesson was useful. As I said, the PDF you'll find in the video description. Remember, if you want to support us, leave us a like and subscribe to this channel. If you want to support us even more, you can buy us a coffee or a fencing book. And until next time, see you then.